another theatre with Scott Rogan. <laughs> How are you, Scott? Hey. Yeah, great, Michael. Rog Home mm -hmm. Cinemas. Well, I walked in this room and it feels really big, mm. but then you told me the size of it and I'm like going, hold on, we've got to talk about these small rooms and what you can achieve yeah. by them. Yeah, yeah, it's surprising. This is sort of more or less four by four meters or a touch under actually. And um, yeah, folks sort of really surprised by how much ambience and space it, it feels. Mm. Um, and it's actually, it's a dark room, which is uh, all by the book as far as we're concerned with video and uh, quality of spaciousness, uh, 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 psychoacoustically and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, and yeah, usually you think light and bright means open and spacious, but when yeah. it's dark, it almost feels like infinity. Yes. And uh, in fact, we weren't really expecting, well, well, you know, applying these metrics to a room. Uh, so some happy surprises. Yeah. One thing that struck me when I came in, I actually didn't realize we were actually going to show the screen lifting up and down. Mm. But you've actually used the front window of the house, because we're in the front of the house here, That's it. To, to actually block the window and create a, uh, a projector screen. Yeah, well th this room was sort of a little bit of a nook off the side of the entry of the little townhouse mm -hmm. we've got here. So we've actually have three windows and an open space. So oh. we've actually covered over two windows. We need to leave yeah. at least one for, for council regulation and for spouse acceptance factor, very important. We also, because it is an open <laughs> open plan room, the curtains open up and we, we yeah. do want some natural daylight. So there's always some compromises and some requirements into every room. So yeah, we've covered up what we can, we've curtained off another part and then uh, the screen can retract up and we've got nice natural light. So these a yeah, few, few behind the scenes happening here. So a lot of people would say small room, big problems. And you've gone small room, actually no problems. Yeah, look, I mean, this, this room's a challenge. As I say, it's sort yeah. of connected to an open plan space. So yeah. by adding the bulkhead in, it's given us a nice curtain rail partition. Mm. It visually breaks, breaks the two spaces apart. So, yeah. you, you know, we don't want the black ceiling mixing with the open plan living area ceiling. So the bulkhead allows for that. Yeah. And then obviously we're really focused on the seating positions and the acoustic layout. Um, so yeah, we, we're going to have a few starting points as to orientation, the entry, what can we do, what can't we do, construction mm. and lifestyle wise, before the, we then get into the nitty gritty of how we're actually gonna make the room perform. You mentioned then just about acoustics, and I'm sure a lot of people will be saying, how do you manage mm. acoustics because you've got power coming out, sound bouncing off everywhere. Mm. And I walked in here and you said, you've got an open space with curtains, uh, and then the rest of the room is, is mm. enclosed in. Yeah. Do small rooms restrict the sound quality you can have or, or not? It, it can be managed. Right. Um, it can definitely be managed. And one, one advantage to a small room is you can make a small room sound large. Ah. Uh, it's harder to get a, a, a large room to sound small though. So <laughs> there's actually uh, one thing going for us there. Um, though, yeah, we, we, can, uh, we can manage the sound in the room to actually give us a huge amount of spaciousness, particularly with you know, surround sound, mm. even for music. We've got a number of speakers that can add all the cues of delay and echo and ambience through the space. So the room isn't required so much to create that, rather the soundtrack yeah. uh, in the, in the multi-channel um, format. Because you were saying, and if you have a look behind us, you, mm. you can see your dynamic wall, as yeah. I call it, the city, uh, cityscape wall. Yeah, the skylines. Yeah. But it really adds to a room, adds to the sound. But you're saying, because of the way you've done this room, the actual mm. soundtracks themselves add to the dynamics in the room. Yeah, we've got, um, you know, stereo sound enters the system and it's then separated and managed throughout the room. And, and it's uncanny, actually, just how well it can position the dialogue there and position ambience back here. In the early days of ProLogic, it was kind of, you're getting a little bit of this and that everywhere. Yeah. But now it's it's remarkable how they can actually, that the processors can grab different sounds from a stereo mix, mm. position them around the room. 
in this room and, and a lot of our new designs even from overhead. Yep. And uh, we've got this phenomenal, you know, rock concert sort of feel or orchestral feel uh, from the stereo soundtrack. Yeah. Now you're talking about the stereo and, and the speakers and I walk in here and I go, well, I can't see any speakers and I notice some flat panels on the walls and yep. flat panels everywhere. And I did ask you, you said, well, one of them is a speaker. I'm going, yeah. small room. How do you get speakers with such terrific sound into these spaces? Yeah, look, that, that is the biggest challenge is the fact that we, we, we want, once we discover our seating position, we, we really, the, mm. the speaker layout is fundamental to great sound. And we don't want to compromise because of a wall, a door, a window, or a big fat chunky speaker that simply doesn't fit where we need it to fit. So yeah. there are manufacturers that are very clever and they're creating low profile. In fact, my, my front speakers here are only 100 mil deep. That's why I didn't realize <laughs> the panels were speakers. Yeah. Because they actually just look like you put a sound acoustic panel on the wall. True, right? So they're, yeah. they're flushed in. Uh, we've already got the toe in we want, so the angle in on the speakers built into the into the side panels. We call them the wings, the, yeah. the, the side panels of a uh, of a cinema system. There are stereo wings, right? And they're towed in a little bit, and at 100 mil deep, because because we're quite with a smaller room, we're sitting closer to the speakers. Just, I don't yeah. I don't actually feel close to this screen though. I mean, you tell me a small. I'm mm. I'm off the back wall, so I'm not squashed against the back yep. wall. I mean, quite very large, comfortable oh, yeah. reclining <laughs> chairs here. I don't feel like I'm sitting on top of the screen. Yeah, so the screen is, is really as far back as we can go and projector as far back as we can go. So yeah. there's a relationship between uh, the lens and and the size of screen and, and how far away that lens or the projector yeah. is. I would have loved to go bigger and wider, yep. but I would have had to put a hole in the wall <laughs> come up with some excuse for building a, 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 and a, a garage outside. <laughs> yeah, what was it going to happen? Trust me, I, I looked at everything. I looked at different oh. lens systems. The fact is, you just cannot break the 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 optical um, zoom mm. that far. You yeah. start destroying the picture. So you know, no one's complaining in here. It's still a two point three meter wide, two point four meter wide image Ooh. from only three point two meters away. Yeah. So we're getting a good size scope. So I think one of the qualities of this room that I've picked up is that total immersion. You talk about your rooms and mm. allowing people to have an immersive experience. Mm. This one delivers. It yeah. packs a real punch. Yeah, look, the, the you know, so you've got, you've got the, obviously the speakers in their place, the, the, the envelopment and the effects. That's why the, the, the speakers are, sorry, the seats are off the back wall. So we can actually get some sound effects behind us. Yeah. If we're on a wall, no sound comes from a wall, so no. you need you need airspace for that. So that was really important. But but then there's the the base, and the base energy is obviously really adds up to about thirty plus percent of the um, audio experience. Wow! So it, it for for what is a small range of sound, mm. it is it is significant, and everyone notices great bass or bad bass or a lack of bass. Um, you know you can feel it. Uh, so we've actually positioned two subwoofers in here very strategically. Yeah. So even though we're in a small room and the confines where the bass really wants to sort of struggle to, to produce, uh, we've, we've optimized that for our row of seating here. Wow. And we're getting, yeah, really good bass in this room. Most people are like, oh, wow, how, how have you done that? Yeah. It's the sort of sound I think most people, enthusiasts out there, no, it's possible that they might not have had quite achieved it yet. Yeah, it definitely comes with at least two subs, and it comes with positioning and and some calibration of that. Yeah. Wow. So if someone's got a small room and they want to have a theater. I mean, this is this is absolutely gorgeous. It's sitting in here, and they want to have a theater. Once you start your process, now I know you love your seating. That's that's yeah. your number one. Let's find out how many people we're going to see. Mm. But when it comes to the process, you, you've named a few challenges this room, multiple windows, spouses, selfishly not letting you knock <laughs> holes in walls. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's terrible. What, what are some of the discussions that are initially need to occur mm. to create a room like this for everybody? Yeah, well, certainly like th this room suits the four seats really well. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to do 
an extra row. No. Um, although there's enough space at the back there, should we need to do a prime time sporting event, we can shuffle these seats forward maybe three or four inches, yeah. 100 mil or so. Then we can get the bar stools back there. I was gonna say, put some bar stools yeah. there. And yeah. we've doubled the seating capacity. So, yeah. but, but really it's about who's using this space often every week. Yeah. And, and this room really based around two people, maybe four. We yeah. do have to, you know, um, decide who our dinner list is gonna be based on how many <laughs> seats people can enjoy in the movie. So, you know, that's the limitation, but, but for, for most folks, it's more about a personal experience. So, mm. uh, but then for some families, it's really necessary to pack more seats in. So, um, some rooms are gonna be more flexible than others. So, mm. that, that is a big one. Um, you know, council and building approvals can't I'll, just cover up all the windows and run with it. I heard you mention this earlier on. I was going to get around to this. Council approvals. When you said it, it kind of honestly it threw me a little bit. I'm going, well, why do I need council? This is my it's house. I can do what I want. <laughs> I'm inside. Yeah. I'm, you yeah. can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, it's important. You, you really need one window per room, right. or, which, which is on a perimeter. Obviously, okay. if it's a pantry in the middle of the house, no go. So, um, so we already had three, and we can narrow that down to one at the end of the day. Right. Um, though we've also covered that with a screen, which rolls up <laughs> and smash the window and escape if right. you know there's a monster at the other end of the house, whatever. You know, yeah. Fire is probably the main main yeah. reason for council okay. concern. Even yeah. though you've got a uh, a great big opening, they've just got curtains. If I could just step out of that opening. Yeah. Yeah, well, true, but but if you're if you cornered in, yeah, that opening yeah. is is um is, is a no go zone. Right. There's also a ventilation thing and and sunlight okay. thing and all these parameters that go into so, it. I, I haven't studied all the rules. No. Uh, some clients get away in a new build, mm -hmm. uh, with it being a storeroom or even a firearms room. Right. Okay. And they don't need windows for that. Okay. So in a new build, there's a few tactics on how you can get around <laughs> my, no windows. My eight by eight meter room is, yeah. is a firearm. It's a firearm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might have a few more problems than good actually yeah. bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you assist people with that? Do you make them aware and help them through that council process? How does that part of it work? Yeah, we work with with builders, uh, oh, right. which then also, based on their certifications, they can then refer us to architectural. Um, folks, or of course, town planners. You bounce mm. it off the town planner, they can guide you where you need to be. We didn't need to really do a lot of work in this space as long as we had that one window off we yeah, went. Off um, in some rooms, we, we might cover the window with one of, say, the acoustic panels, mm. which simply pops off like a photo frame. Right. So we've okay. added no fixed construction over the window, mm -hmm. which also kind of scoots us around yeah. any of those problems. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So we get around, so now we've, we've sorted out the seating, we've sorted that, okay, windows and some of those council mm. requirements. Now what do you start looking at for the person in, in the room? What do you start looking at in the room? Um, look, day, decor's a big one. You know, um, mm. a dark room really is best, but mm. not everyone likes that. And particularly, a lot of people don't get it, not straight away. And we may in the end sort of going towards darker tones. Yeah. I can tell you, everyone loves it. Yeah. It's just unusual. You think a dark room, oh, it's going to feel weird. But as, as you guys experienced today, you walked in and go, oh, wow, this feels bigger than it really is. It does. It does actually feel bigger. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the perception is, oh, if it's all dark, I'm going to feel closed in. Yeah. And it's actually a space that feels more comfortable, relaxing, it's sort of like our little if we go back to Nathanderol Nathan area, oh, yeah. what is that called? Caveman era. Caveman era. Um, yeah. The little little caves are a safe space. Open spaces were dangerous. So mm. so the human element actually really enjoys these spaces a lot. Mm. Um, but you know, if, if there's some artwork or you know, there's a current one where the curtains, they gotta stay. The carpet, they have to stay. All right, cool, let's work around that. Let's mm. see what other colors and tones can work in with the room. Yeah. Now, you, you say, because you deal a lot with established homes. I know you do a lot of new builds as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Mm. But the folks that have got the established home and the family home and they're saying, okay, come in here. 
are there data and electrical restrictions that you just need to be aware of when you start playing in this space? Look, so, yeah, sometimes. I mean, some homes have, have got a good amount of data, mm. uh, pay TV cabling, free view cabling is already there. Yep. Cool. Uh, others, we, we need to upgrade that. Um, and then, you know, power, most, most rooms will have a, a, a convenient enough power point, but we really like to run a a dedicated 15 amp circuit to the main room. Okay. Uh, even if we don't need that much draw, it automatically gives us a fresh separate line. It's so not sharing the circuit with the lighting, the oven, the vacuum the cleaner, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we like to keep those electrical noises away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's a basement room under two or three stories, of concrete mm -hmm. block, then it's going to be a bit trickier to get in the cabling there. Yeah. Um, and with that plumbing for aircon as well. Oh, okay. So, you know, there's another room we're looking at now, which is currently, has been used as, a, as an office. Mm. It's a pretty good size room, about four by five, uh, with actually a little wet bar as well, which is a oh, bonus, right. and a little nook in the entrance. Currently used as an office, sort of retiring, Basement level of a, of a nice big family home. What are we going to do with it? Oh, great to go up cinema and the challenge there as well We're going to have potentially We're actually going to look at putting the equipment in a storeroom and the projector even outside of that room in the garage That's oh. one wall we could put a hole in quite yeah. successfully and yeah, not box. upset yeah. yeah, box it in the other room So we're actually going to do a good job of keeping the heat out of the room, but it's still a very still space and you get yourself and a few grandkids in there, um, you want to cool it down, you want to recirculate the mm. air. So a split air con's great, and they're a bit tricky to wire up and get into the room. So yeah. there's, there's a few challenges there. You, you mentioned then it being a still room, and I've heard you talk about this before, that some rooms, mm. the I mean, I talk about taking echo out of the room, because in our studio, we have echo issues all the time, and yeah. you're helping out with that, which is yeah, fantastic. But in this room, you're mm. going, no, 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 I don't want it to be dead. So in some of these rooms, are they just too flat? Is the sound just completely flat and yeah. you have to do something with it? I had an inquiry this week. The fellas sort of like, oh, can, you know, can you guide me on this? This is what I'm thinking of doing so far. And um, curtains all the way around with some foam stuff behind it. Yeah. And the thing is that a particular product will have an acoustic property, but it may affect a very narrow part of the spectrum. So there's our range of hearing and it and it's really effective like right here. Okay. So you put that all the way around the room and what it's doing is actually taking a notch out of the natural spectrum of the sound. So it doesn't sound natural. So we actually want to control the reflections. We want to do this in a balanced way that if we're going to absorb some sound, we want to absorb a very broad range of the sound. Right. So it, it keeps balance and keeps true to its spectrum. If we just put carpet around the room, carpet might absorb it, I don't know, a, a high mid frequency. Yeah. Then all we've done is notched out that sound out of the entire soundtrack, <laughs> oh. which sounds a bit weird. Yeah. So we want to keep balance. So okay. the type of material, the quantity of, the placement of that in the room, it, it, it's, it's look, there's a science there. Mm. Um, and I guess for us, we can sort of intuitively, where the art side comes in, work out well, how and where to put that, and, and it's got to look cool as well. <laughs> I know, I look at some of your panelling, and, and, it, and it looks cool. Even in this room, I mean, you've, you've, I know you've got dark colours, and you've actually got some nice burgundy panelling, mm. what I'd call the colour, yeah. but you've stepped on it. It's, it's like an art feature you've made of them. Yeah, we've sort of kept it tall in the front of the room where the wall's quite exposed, and as yeah. it sort of... Uh, it goes up towards the lounge, it sort of steps up, so the lounge starts to take that space. Yeah. Uh, and then the last panel actually on that wall is hiding the speaker. And oh. the speakers, even though it's slim, it's needed to pitch forward, so we need a certain depth on that last this panel. This is clever. How yeah, and each panel actually sets down in, in depth as it goes towards the front of the room, and it oh. sets a different height. So yeah, there's a lot of little, in fact, that's the tricky part. I'm getting really good at, uh, we've got a lot of calculators and things for our speaker placement and engineering. 
and I, and I sort of like smashed that in the first half of the day. And then I could spend like an hour or two just working out where the boxes on the wall should go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't done an interior design course before, so yeah. that bit's sometimes the most challenging, but it's got to look right and um, feel right, you know? What I like about those boxes, just talking about your room, is I actually didn't realize it went different. And now you've mentioned it, now my eyes are looking going, oh, they do, but the cleverness of stepping up gradual increments yeah. of depth, you've actually just not put a big thick box at the end. So even though you haven't done an interior exactly. design course, your designs are very purposeful and very cleverly done. Yeah, look, and, and look, I've been lucky to be in some beautiful homes over the years, so it sort of rubbed off on me, worked some amazing cabinet makers. Yeah. Uh, when we had our showroom, big showroom, we had some beautiful fit out there. So it's really rubbed off and, and um, yeah, we're trying to create that well factor, that ambience and that mm. comfort. And, and those little details really add up, definitely. You know, the back wall, we've lit it up, we've brought a light in so we can actually see some <laughs> detail on this back wall here. And I call it the city skyscrape. But it has a very specific purpose, doesn't it? It just doesn't absorb sand and flatten it out. It does something mm, else. Yeah, because we've got the curtains, we've got some side control, the carpet. We've even got some, some overhead uh, acoustic control. So we're at risk of certainly taking out too much sound, over absorbing. Mm. So the back wall, we, we still don't want the back wall to reflect big, you know, waves of sound. So we've maintained the energy in the room by diffusing the sound. Right. So the sound will hit the back wall and it will scatter, but it'll add that ambience. It's a little bit like, this is actually probably the easiest way of putting it. So say you go to set up early at a trade show and you're in a massive hall. Mm. And these, you talking to someone, and there's maybe some carpenters, two carpenters the other end of the hall, and they're talking. And because of the reflections of that space, you can you can't hardly hear each other talk. Yeah, it's like like a brand new home, concrete and, and brick. Yeah, and you have you talking to the builder, and someone else is talking. It's like oh my god, it's too much, right? Yeah. Yet when the trade show is full, and you got a thousand people in the room, you've got this ambience this is what mm. we call a diffuse sound field there's a lot of energy in the room yet it's randomized and you can actually talk easier to your friend with a thousand people in the room than just an empty room with two other people trying to talk very interesting it's sort of yeah wow. sort of yeah, that sort of makes sense yeah right? yeah it does yeah. And, and it looks cool <laughs> and look people, look nine times out of ten people absolutely love it yeah and then a few people go oh no that's no good so um, <laughs> really? but yeah but, but it's definitely a really cool feature in fact it's, it's probably the one of the biggest uh, comments I mean, I've, I've seen it on the roofs you've done it in the roofs on Your some ceilings, of the places yep. yeah, on the ceilings which is really really cool yours has got little figurines stepping off the blocks all your star wars figures jumping off there. Few little, you gotta add a few little tweaks to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's it neat. looks cool. So talking about that, talking about tweaks, and you said that it came down to what people wanted to put in there. You saying about this guy's got a wet bar, you dress this up, and you're using the clay place, the space really cleverly there. Mm. How it's a dark room. If people struggling with that concept. How do you personalize a dark room? Yeah, we've got some art features which which need to stay in a particular room. So that's going on the, on the back wall. Right. Um, the uh, and some folks are pretty neutral as well. They're like, no, it's there for movies, so we don't need to add a lot. But then other folks are like, I've got to put the Terminator in and the Batman in. Yeah. yeah. So we do want to think of which areas in the space can allow for that. Like we've got a bit of space between on the seats here. So we've got mm. the bass guitar. Uh, we've got some Star Wars figurines. Uh, it's also where I hide the steering wheel system for the PlayStation, yes. um, which is which is pretty rad, I must admit. Um, I wish I could spend more time playing it, but that's the way it runs. I'm shocked you're going, I haven't played this for, oh, days. I'm going, days? No, weeks, weeks. weeks. Like, I go on, weeks, weeks in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, how so, many games cool. do you have? It's like, just one, just the racing game. It's all I'm interested yeah, it's in. All so, interesting. Yeah. I've been in some of your places and you've got little barriers set up, you've got popcorn machines happening. Mm. Is Can a small room still incorporate some of these really cool features, really like cinema type features, I call them? Yeah, look, we, we can. So there's sort of mm. certainly some, like even some angles in this space where we can add potentially some features. We've actually used the entrance on the other side of the cinema for the Iron Man um, mm. artwork. So, 
you don't really see that from the open plan area it's sort of nooked away mm. but it's an extension to the cinema room even though at that part of the house it's light and bright again mm. so it's sort of tricked in yeah a few extra features yeah wow so someone when they come so you you talk about the seating you've talked about how you're going to hide the, the speakers the use of windows coloring get it darker are there things that when you walk in because we talked about the sound now we've talked about projectors but not really and you talked about the challenges in this room now if mm -hmm. i'm getting a projector and i've only got a short distance i'm not you but some people may say well is that going to compromise my picture because i haven't got the distance no it's really i mean we want nice big cinematic screens ultimately mm. and look in this room it would have been nice to go a bit wider we just couldn't so we've ended, up with a, big, we've ended up with a 110 inch screen so you know you're crying for me right so yeah. um and <laughs> the and the hd quality is just yeah everyone's pretty mind-blowing they're like wow i thought only a tv could do that but you know if, if we're not getting 100 plus inches then tvs do start to come into the picture because they're 85 inches are yeah. sort of possible, but you, you still want to be within about two, two and a half meters mm. from an 80 inch TV to get a cinematic feel. Right. Um, usually we're in a bigger room. This is about as small as most rooms would, would be, you know, yeah. 3.8, 3.9 meters square. It's mm. not often we go smaller. So the, the projectors do lend themselves to giving us plenty of size and, and much bigger than a TV. And the um, projector yeah. you've got is a super, we'll talk about that in a second, it is a super high quality projector. Yeah, look, it, it is beauty, it's actually a special edition um, JVC, so... Um, Limited edition, yeah. so we bought one. Yeah, <laughs> so there's 20 in the world made for these guys, so wow. we were lucky with that. It's the highest contrast we've ever built, contrasts the ability for the projector to actually turn off the light and, and produce black levels mm -hmm. and not leak the light through. And JVC is super famous for that. So yeah. I'm pretty lucky to have this. I'm babysitting it for the moment. And uh, I'm no doubt the special edition will end up in the client's home pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. So it, the, the size of it doesn't mean you cover. I mean, this is a 2.4 meter wide screen. This is, this, and I don't mean corner to corner on one of these angles. You There's just, the width. The, yeah. the actual width. So this thing is, is big. So we don't have to compromise on that. What other important factors do you take into account when designing and, and giving someone a small space that will deliver what they want? Well, the, the, other, the other thing actually we've sort of skipped over a little bit mm. is the equipment. Where oh, is the right. equipment going to go? Um, yeah, because you a can't fair bit of it. it in here. Yeah. yeah. So in this space, we've, we've had it under the screen, which is in a, in a black fabric finish, so it really mm. does sort of disappear. Um, there's a relationship between the speakers and the bench top reflecting off the bench top. Uh, also the screen light as well. If we've got a, a surface yeah. just under or on top of, so the ceiling, same same story. Um, the light from the, you know, we've got so much light off these screens, they light up the room and they'll certainly light up any surfaces close to the screen. That's why I've sort of kept those left and right wings as flat as possible so they don't reflect. Right. We've got the screen as far back as possible to maximize the lens distances mm. to give everyone a better vantage point. Um, so we've kept the, the bench top further from the screen as well, which has meant we've had to go a little bit lower, but we've got multiple racks inside our, our cabinet rack area. Mm. Um, but then there's, you know, this, this, the sound issue, we've now got speakers directly above a bench top, which isn't nice, it's a reflective surface. Well, usually that. In this room, the top level is actually a combination of MDF and, and acoustic material. Right. And in front of the speakers, we've actually drilled out the MDF, so the mid base is, is effectively see-through, like the, the sound will actually go through the cabinet space and actually absorb through the cabinet space. So, <gasps> The top bench top, as far as the speakers are concerned, are invisible. Wow. Pretty much invisible. So, and our data backs that up. You know, we we take measurements of each individual speaker. We actually can see mm. what the sound is doing, and um, yeah, the response of these speakers are brilliant. It's it's like they're playing in a nice big open field where there's no boundaries and issues affecting yeah. them yet in this tiny space. So. 
that innovation we're really really excited about this is actually the first project we've we've had to and do this and therefore really invented it yeah wow invented and i think that's one of the things whether it's a small medium large space you customize it it's like you invent new things to meet the challenges and deliver what the client wants well, it's, it's all about thinking outside the box it really is and that's yeah. where when we when we engage with a client with a, with a mymax cinema design it gives us the time the hours to actually do that work for them they do that in the 3d cad space the computer software so all the ideas the brainstorming the bad ideas the good ones the measurements the concepts, it's all done in that space so we can really boil down to something mm. really going to hit the nail on the head, really in the first presentation. It's not often we, we don't nail it, but of yeah. course with a bit of a, a review and a rehash and, and some ideas need presenting to bounce off. And But yeah, we really, really get down to it pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it, project takes, you know, it takes some days of work. On most of them to design it yeah wow and real focus you know i turn the phone off put my grooves on the mu music yeah. on and I'm, I'm in that space for the half a day well not the whole day i do a half day session have a breather yeah. and go again you know so so talking about that talking about that process what is the process from start to finish and are there any inconveniences that the client goes through during that process it, you know, what's it like uh pretty pretty simple for them yeah. <laughs> a little bit harder for us obviously you know we're, we're, we're doing the work for them so um there's obviously the first discovery meeting working out you know the what are our boundaries what are the capabilities of the room what needs to stay what can go what's flexible um then you know we measure it up into into the uh, program so mm. we draw up the whole, whole room into the 3d program uh, and then, then the work starts with the engineering now. Um, we measure, calculate the base response. Yeah. Sometimes we measure the room itself or we can, rectangular rooms, we can actually predict acoustics so okay. we can apply that. Sets our seating, sets the speakers, it all sort of layers up. But, but you know, it's not, a, it's not a perfect workflow because you know, you want the speakers there, but the screen needs to go there and there's that reflection there. So you've, you've got those building blocks and you really have to sort of massage things into place. Right. And we're, st we, 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 we're trying to sneak every few millimeters. But you may notice, like with our center channel here, you can just see over the center perfect line of sight to the screen. Yeah. These, these like, it was within three millimeters. Yeah. Admittedly, if there was a kid in the room, we'd probably have to drop the sound down a bit. I can do that. I can pitch it down slightly. Of course. <laughs> but but, but for, for, for us in the seating position, we've squeezed where that center channel can go. We've got the screen as low as possible because yeah. um, we almost like it a little bit lower, if anything. Um, we, we've, you know, it, everything's within millimeters. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of negotiation going on there with engineering. Um, and then, of course, uh, we come out for presentation and you know see see if people are loving it though. Uh, we've we've now got VR, um, so our rooms in 3D get loaded into VR. Andrew, who's in uh, my chief operations uh, man, um, he's 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 great. He's developing this for us, and uh, we we'll actually better yeah see the new rooms in VR be, before we build it at presentation. Oh, so, unbelievable! That's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Someone looking at going, I've always wanted one of these, but I just thought it'd be too difficult. You take all that difficulty away. Um, what's the best way of contacting yourself? I know you've got a few different things happening at the moment. You've got your Facebook and YouTube, and you're building some landing pages. Yeah, indeed. What's yeah. the best way at the moment to contact I'd you? I'd say Facebook's the way to roll. It's between mm. a few web pages at the moment. So it's uh, Rogue Home Cinema. Um, look that up, you'll find us on Facebook and, and in there the, the various links to get in direct contact from us are evolving as, as our uh, online digital footprint evolves as well. Fantastic. Yeah. And from what we go on, say a small room like mm -hmm. this, how long does it take from that initial discovery meeting to mm -hmm. someone being able to sit here and go, I've got what I want. Done and done. Um, yeah, look, it's for a renovation where it's painting, it's carpet, it's all these elements. It's really a good two months right. um, from let's get this thing going. It's yeah. two, two, three weeks in design. Um, 
and then yeah sort of two uh, well yeah really really two month process for yeah. fit out um is what we got to expect there yeah Wonderful. it's a little bit to it and look you said small room the small rooms really take the same time as almost <laughs> the bigger rooms uh, everything just has to, it's, it's almost, it's really, this room is pretty complicated. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. I was waiting um, for you to say actually the small rooms take a bit longer than the large rooms. Yeah. The complication. This, this was tough. It was tough. And, and being that it's a demo space, it is our, yeah. our demo room uh, here in WA. Yeah, this um, is in Como, in West Australia. Como, yes. This is out of, out of my own home space. And, um, you know, really, really, really fussed it. Um, it's funny, I tried I tried to sort of shortcut it. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll do this. And I had to run exactly the same process <laughs> as everyone else. The, the, the whole process, you know, we know what works and, and this room was no different. You know, there was no extra treatment or shortcuts or whatever. Yeah. And, and it's taken, this was the, the B project amongst other projects. It's actually taken three months with us working on this one on wow. the weekends or on the sideline to, to get it to this point. So I'm, I'm yeah, really happy we've Fantastic. got it cranking. Fantastic. Yeah. Have you got an email people could shoot you, uh, Scott, if they want to come and have a look at the room? Um, yeah, definitely. So we've got admin at, at uh, roguehomecinema.com.au. Mm -hmm. uh, you can hit us up there. Um, and um, yeah, look, we, we do have appointment slots available. Uh, if people have been curious to see what a MyMac cinema is all about, does this little room really compare to IMAX? Well, come and check it out, tell me.